Notion tips and tricks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a time tracker in Notion using buttons. And this is how it works. I have a timesheet database where I record the time I spend on each project every day. And below there's a project summary database which so shows the total time I've spent on the project. So you simply click the start button to start recording time. And this adds a record to the timesheet database where you can select the project you're working on and optionally the type of work you're doing. The start property then shows the time and date that the start button was clicked. Open the record and this is where you can pause and unpause the time you're recording. So for example, you might want to pause if you're going for lunch. So just simply click the pause button and the time you paused is recorded here. And click the unpause button to start recording your time again. You can do this as many times as you want. Then when you want to stop recording time on this piece of work altogether, click on the finish job button. Now when you go into the timesheet, you can see it's calculated the minutes spent on this piece of work. It minuses all the time that you paused. It also gives you the time in hours and minutes. And if you scroll down, you can see that this time has been added to the total for the project. Now I'll show you how to set this up from scratch in your Notion workspace. First, you need to create a timesheet database. I delete the tags property that is automatically created and then create a projects database, again, deleting the tags. Start adding properties to the timesheet database. First, a date property, naming it start. Then an end date property. Followed by a select property that I call work type. This is optional, but I like to select whether I'm doing development work or having a meeting, etc. Next, create another select property and call it timesheet status. This records whether you're currently recording time, you've paused the time, or you've completed this piece of work. So set those as options. Then add a person property. So I use this to record who is doing the work, but, but this is optional if it's always going to be you doing the work. Finally, create a relation property to the projects database. Select show on projects and limit it to one relation. And I drag this property to the beginning of the database as it's important that you fill this in. You can see here in the projects database, the relation to the timesheet database is shown. And all you need to add here is a standard status property. So to get started, I'll add in a project record and delete all the empty records in both databases. And I like these new Notion tick boxes, which makes this much easier to do. So now we get to the buttons. At the top of the page, add a new button, and we want to select add a page to, and we want to add a page to the timesheet database. Next, set the start property to the now option, which will add the time and date the button was clicked on. Then we want to set the timesheet status property to current. This shows that the time is being recorded. And optionally, you can set the person property to the person who clicked on the button. Finally, name the button. So I'm going to call it start and give it a relevant icon. I'll select the play icon in red. Click done and we can test that the button works. You can see it adds a record to the timesheet and sets the start date and time. 
Now that's done, you need to create a third database to record the times you pause your work. So create this as a full page database and call it paused time. Again, delete the text property and then add a date property and call it start. Um, then another date property called end. Finally, create a select property and call it paused status. Then add two options, calculated and paused. Next, create a formula property which will calculate the time you paused the work. It calculates the minutes between the start and end date. I'll add the formula on screen so you can pause the video to copy it and I will also add a link to my blog in the video description. So from there you can copy and paste the formula. Call this property time paused and next you need to add a relation property. A relation property to the timesheet database. Selecting show on timesheet and limit to one page. Delete all the empty records and then go back to the timesheet page where I'll click the start button to create a new record and I'll open this record up and select create a template. You can give the template a standard title and icon which I'll do and in the body of the template add a few lines at the top to make room for the buttons that you're going to add later and then add a table view. For this table view, select the pause time database that we've just created, click on filter and select the timesheet and then select the template name. This will show all the records in the pause database that are related to the timesheet record you are viewing. I then hide the database name and the filter and set the timesheet relation to not show in the view. At the top here, you want to add the pause button and you want this button to add a page to the paused time database that you've just created. Then set the timesheet relation property to this page, which relates it to the timesheet record you're in. And set the start property to now which will record the time and date you click the button. And finally, set the pause status to paused. With this button, you also want to add another step and set this step to edit page in this page, which will be the timesheet record you are in. And here you want to set the timesheet status to paused. Finally, name the button pause and select a relevant icon. Add another button and this button you want it to edit pages in the pause time database. For this you need to set a filter so it knows which records to pause. For the filter select pause status is paused. Then select the end property and set it to the now option. Set the pause status property to calculated. And for this button, you need to add another step. This step, select Edit Pages In, this page, and you want it to set the timesheet status to current. Finally, name the button and select an icon. The third button to add in this template will stop recording time in the timesheet record. So for this button, set it to edit pages in this page, set the end property to now, and the timesheet status to completed. Call the button finish job and select an icon. I use the checkbox icon. Now you just have to rearrange the buttons onto a single row, if you want them to be on a single row and then go back out of the template and then click 
here to add the template to the record and this will just check everything is working as expected, which it looks like it is. Once you come out of this record, you want to set the default template to the one you've just created. And to double check it's all working, I'll add another record to the timesheet, open it, and you can see that the template is automatically added. I'll pause this record and then go back to the timesheet database to fill in some of the data. Now we have all the buttons added, we need to create the properties that calculate how much time has been worked on for each record in the timesheet. So first off, add a roll-up property that brings records from the paused time database. So select the paused time relation. You want to bring back the time paused property from the paused database. Select the time pause property. As there may be more than one pause time record, you want to select sum as the calculate option and this will return a total of all the paused minutes. Call this property paused minutes. Next, add a formula property called total times brackets minutes. Set the formula to this, which calculates the time between the start and end properties on the timesheet minus any paused minutes from the pause database. The last property to add to the timesheet database is another formula. This turns the total time in minutes into an hour and minutes display. Again, these formulas are available in the accompanying blog, so you can copy and paste them from there. Name this property total time. I hide the pause time relation property in the timesheet database as well. Lastly, you need to add some properties to the projects database that calculate the total time for each project. Start by adding a roll-up property, which is linked to the timesheet relation. Select the total time in minutes property, and you want to sum these in the calculation. Name this property total times brackets minutes. So I'll quickly add the project to this other timesheet record up here and hide the timesheet relation in the projects database. Finally, add a formula property to the projects database to convert the total minutes to hours and minutes. I'll rename this property to total time and hide the minutes property to make the table look tidy. And then you're done. A timesheet tracking tool has been created.